here and this is bucket list homestead and before we pop over into the kitchen and start our canning project today for march canning madness i just wanted to show you some of my pantry which we call our store for our long-term storage as you can see the jars behind me that i have canned most of this is from last year and this isn't even all of it we have gone we have ate actually quite a bit of it um, in the last few months and behind you there's another shelf with uh, there's another shelving unit with two shelves that have um, canned potatoes and some soups and I think squash yes squash um, but this is when I say canning is life-changing I'm not being funny I'm not being sarcastic I am being true blue honest it is truly life-changing and I say that for a few reasons the money you save there there are I did have a count of what I did this is I did a video at the end of um, harvest season last year of all the things I have canned all last year and not only does it help me see how much I've canned but it lets me know how much I need to plan for and grow or visit farmers markets to make the same amount as this year there's some things we don't need to make as much of because we just haven't ate them and even though we're still a few months away from the real busy canning season we're not going to eat that much of it um, mainly like a lot of jams and jellies I did like 500 jars and that was everything from meals in jars meat in jars um, soups, broths, carrots, vegetables, um, apple juice, cranberry juice, butters, corn, you know, you name it. Um, blueberry pie filling, apple pie filling. There's just so many things. <laughs> uh, pears. I did a lot of pears, which I didn't do enough because Grace, our daughter, loves canned pears. And the price of them has just gone through the roof. The little Dole Cups, she loves those that are just in fruit juice, not syrup. So I started canning a lot of pears um, that I buy by the bushel from a local farmer's market. And I realized I definitely need to do more of them <laughs> this year. But I just wanted to show, um, I this is thousands of dollars worth of food. Um, one day I'm actually going to sit down and figure out how much um, it does cost me um, versus buying. And it is very important that it does save you money. But the main reason I do this is because I know what exactly apple jelly. I know exactly what is in this apple jelly and what's not, <laughs> more importantly. Um, I also make low sugar apple uh, jellies and jams with my Pomona's pectin, which I absolutely love and I highly recommend. Like literally, my old strawberry jam recipe was like eight cups of straw or eight cups of sugar. And even when I would make that years before I knew better, I would think to myself, this is an insanely amount of a lot of sugar. With Pomona's pectin, that same recipe goes down to like a cup, maybe a cup and a half. It's insane and it tastes so much better because you taste the fruit. I also know that most of the things I've planted have, have been grown with no pesticides, no chemicals. Um, there's no added preservatives. There's no weird, you know, there's not a insane amount of white salt. Um, I use Himalayan sea salt here. Um, I actually deal with high blood pressure. It's a side effect from the chemotherapy I received um, amongst a couple other things that happened to me during chemo. And um, that's very important to me that I use a salt that is good for me, which Himalayan sea salt is. It's actually been known to lower blood pressure. It tastes amazing and it's not processed as much. I would love to use Remen sea salt, but I cannot get a source of that anywhere here. So I kind of went off the tangent there, but just that. So this it's mainly I know what's not in my products and that means a lot to me coming from a person who has survived cancer four times and we are not perfect we still eat some things that probably not are always the greatest for us but we always try to do a 80 20 rule 80 percent of the time we're eating really well and healthy and 20 percent of the time we may not and we do not beat ourselves up for that but this is why I say it's life-changing um it's also shelf stable the power goes out I have shelf stable meat on my shelves that I can uh, don't have to worry about spoiling if the power is out for too long and my freezer goes down. So if the power goes out, I do have more shelf stable things. Busy, crazy times coming. Having meals in a jar, I'm still be able to put a nice, healthy meal on the table for my family. Having meals in jars is definitely that's a game changer with the life changing canning. And that's going to bring us to today 
Today, we are going to be pressure canning again because we are canning a low acid um, item and it is going to be a meal in a jar. So versatile, you can use this in a couple of recipes. I'm primarily canning it as chicken pot pie filling, um, but when you go to use this, you will add your flour to thicken it up and put it into your pie crust. It also makes a great chicken soup base that you can add noodles or rice or whatever. I'm gonna say one thing up front, I don't like potatoes in my chicken pot pie. I don't, I'm just not a fan. I don't like it. So if you want potatoes, you absolutely can add potatoes. So don't come at me because you're not seeing potatoes. I'm not a big fan of potatoes in my pot pie. Um, and especially if I don't want to use it for pot pie, I can use it for something else. Potatoes aren't in it. Um, but it's delicious. I love this. It's one of my husband's absolute favorite meals. Like he asks us for his birthday <laughs> almost every year or any special occasion. He loves chicken pot pie. So we're going to hop over into the kitchen and start Canon March Madness week three. So the recipe I'm using today is actually from this cookbook and I'll link it down below. It's pressure canning for beginners and beyond um, from, by Angie Schneider. And she has everything from meals in a jar to um, mushrooms, vegetables, tomatoes, like all kinds of things are in here. Um, I will say like, I'm changing it a little bit, but everything else will be the same. So I'm not gonna call this a rebel recipe by any means. I also have in my oven six large uh, mouth quart jars that are staying warm. Um, I just find that easier than keeping them in your uh, pressure um, canner, but you can certainly do that with some water to keep them warm. And I've already done all my prep, so I'm not going to have to bore you with all the prep and everything. Boy, the lighting is not the greatest in here today. Let me see if I can help this. Sometimes just changing the, <laughs> the angle of the camera helps. That's a lot better. I am going to get an apron on because I do not want to get anything on my clothes. And I'm gonna tell you that in my large stock pot here, I have 12 cups of chicken broth, which took every last bit of broth I have. Um, so that is going to be my next thing I get canning. I should, I just wanna mention, I checked all my jars, made sure there was nothing um, chipped or broke. I washed them all up. I have my lids already ready over there. I have my canning mat ready. Um, my lids are over there. So everything is ready to go. Okay, so this is where, <sighs> My recipe is a little bit different than the cookbook. She uses six cups total of vegetables. And she uses two cups of green beans, two cups of carrots, and two cups of potatoes. Like I said, I don't like potatoes in mine. So I am using six cups. And this is frozen. They're not frozen anymore. I took them out last night and let them all thaw out. But these are organic um, mixed vegetables, carrot, corn, and green beans. This is what we prefer in our pot pie. And I just measured out six six cups this is great bang for your buck the bag is huge <laughs> and i and, and i'm just going to put that in here and i um get a lot of pot pie recipes out of that one bag so it's very um budget friendly and i'm going to put that in there and then the next little thing that changes is she doesn't put necessarily um all the herbs or spices that i care for in our pot pie so one of the things she does use is thyme. So I am gonna add some thyme. One teaspoon. One teaspoon of dried thyme leaves. Two tablespoons of a non-iodized salt. And then I'm going to use two teaspoons of basil. That's a half a teaspoon. So, yeah. Two teaspoons of basil and one bay leaf that I will take out before we can. Okay, and a bay leaf. So we are gonna bring this to a boil. And once it's at boil, we're gonna boil it for 10 minutes. Okay, so our filling has boiled for 10 minutes. It smells good. Um, I, should, I forgot to mention, you boil for 10 minutes on medium high heat. Okay, for me, that's around five on my stove. Um, you want, so we're going to start filling the jars. And we want to leave one inch headspace. And you want to try and make sure you get the same amount of solids. 
in each jar. So I did two heaping scoops of the chicken and the vegetables. And then I'm just going to top it off to one inch headspace with some of the broth. Okay. And I'm just gonna keep going and then we debubble just like we did, um, we've done with every other thing we've canned. Wipe off the tops of the jars because they will be a little greasy. is greasy I'm gonna use a little bit of white vinegar to wipe off the jars okay I'm using my electric pressure canner again and in my last pressure canning video, I forgot to tell you that I treat this like a traditional pressure canner, okay? I check the um, gasket here, the rubber gasket. I check that every time. I check to make sure my valves are clean and free of any hard water buildup or any debris. Um, I make sure everything is in working order <laughs> before I even use it. So in here, I have eight cups of hot water, and this takes 90 minutes. And yes, I checked the recipe to make sure that it is 90 minutes. I quadruple checked the recipe. Okay. I have it plugged in. I'm going to make sure my lid is locked. Okay, make sure my valve is turned in the right direction I need it to be, which when you're starting, it's facing this way. I hope you can see that. Okay, and I'm just gonna move this a little bit on my stove. And then I'm going to come down to Hi, time, 90 minutes. Okay, start. Once the pressure canner reaches the correct internal temperature, the canner will beep once, and the control panel display will read E10, E10. The preset E10 code means the exhaust mode is going to vent for 10 minutes. The pressure canner will automatically count down for that 10 minutes. Once the control panel says E0, you will need to, it will beep once and you'll need to turn your valve to the airtight. Once the canner resumes, the control panel will beep again. The required process time entered earlier will now start to count down. During this time, your canner will begin to release steam even though the pressure limiting valve is set to airtight. This is completely normal. Four quarts of chicken pot pie filling. Um, the recipe does call for six. I only got four, but this is four more than I had just an hour or two ago, so we're pretty happy about it. And just like everything else we've canned, we're gonna let these sit here a minimum of 12 hours. Um, it'll probably be a little bit longer than that for me, but a minimum of 12, then we check to make sure they all sealed properly, wipe them all down, mark them, <laughs> mark them, and then put them on the shelf and they will be ready to go. And how you would use this, just like if you're making it fresh, you obviously have your pie crust, and you open one quart and you add one or two tablespoons of flour um, to a little bit of water and then add it, thicken it up, pour it into your pie crust and you got chicken pot pie. Or like I said, it makes a great soup base too. So lot, this is one of my favorite things to can. It is so easy. Um, like I said, I know exactly what's in it and what's not. And there's four meals <laughs> on my shelf, shelf stable for the next little bit. Definitely will be making more so I can make sure to have more <laughs> on the shelf. But for now, this is four more than I had. So thanks for coming along with me while we canned chicken pot pie for March Canning Madness. I think I already know what we're doing for next week. So make sure you hit that bell so you don't forget to get notified for the next video. Until then, take care, God bless, and we'll see you all soon.